In Chapter 3, Section 3, we add two more reasons to the system. If we have congruent triangles, then corresponding parts of those congruent triangles are congruent. And if we have a circle, then all radii of that circle are congruent. Today, we're going to add two new reasons to our system. The first, in short form, looks like this and would be read, if we have congruent triangles, then the corresponding parts of the congruent triangles are congruent. For example, if we have just the notation of triangle cat congruent to triangle dog, we can list out the three corresponding sides. The first two letters form segment CA, that would be congruent to the first two letters here, which form segment DO. The second and third letters would form AT is congruent to OG. And the first and the third letters would let us know that CT is congruent to DG. We also would have the correspondence of the angles. Angle CAT would be congruent to angle DOG. Angle ATC would be congruent to angle OGD and angle TCA would be congruent to angle GDO. Let's see what that would look like on the triangles themselves. If I label this CAT, notice I've rotated this triangle 90 degrees, so this would be DOG. Then I have CA, is congruent to DO, AT is congruent to OG, and CT is congruent to DG. Similarly, with the angle correspondence, I have angle A is congruent to angle O, angle ATC, A to T to C, is congruent to O to G to D angle OGD, and angle TCA right here is congruent to angle GDO. Our second new reason is that if we're given a circle, all radii are congruent. By definition, a circle is the set of all points equidistant from a given point. So if I'm given point A and I know that Z is a certain distance away, then the set of all points equidistant would form a circle. So in other words, if I were to choose any radius on this circle, they would all be the same length. So let's work out some of the problems. Here we are given kite, and we are told that ki is congruent to ti. KE is congruent to TE. So now I have to figure out how angle K would be congruent to angle T. And I'm not going to mark that just yet because I don't know for sure that that's true, even though it will be. Otherwise, it wouldn't be in our homework. The first thing I want to think of is 
right now, I can see that K and T are also part of a triangle. So I want to think, am I going to use theorem side, 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 angle, side, or angle, side, angle? Well, they've given me two sides, so I can probably eliminate this theorem. Now, if I can get angle K congruent to angle T, I can use side angle side. But if I were able to do that, I wouldn't need to write the proof because that's my proof statement. So it's probably going to be side, side, side. So I'm going to begin by writing statements and reasons. And when you're writing this in your homework, if you don't have the given and the proof statement on a pre-printed sheet, you do need to write that down. And we need to mark the diagram. Notice that's how I started, was marking the diagram with the given information. So I know if I'm going to use side, 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 I need a pair of sides. So I'm going to say that Ki is congruent to Ti. That is given. Then my second pair of sides was also given Ke is congruent to TE. Now I need a third pair of sides. I can use the reflexive property to say that IE is congruent to IE. Then I can say that triangle I K E is congruent to triangle I K E is congruent to triangle I T E. Order matters by side, side, side. And if I use the left margin notation, then I already know what the three line, three numbers are for the parentheses. And I am certain that I have a well-organized proof. Now, I can go ahead and say that angle K is congruent to angle T. Because if I'm given congruent triangles, then I know that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And my congruent triangles are in line four. Looking at another example, I'm given angle PFR, P to F to R, that's this one right here, is congruent to ORF. And I'm going to mark it over by the vertex. And then PRF, that's this one here, is congruent to O F R. It's that one there. Again, I can see the two triangles in here, so I'm going to start thinking am I going to use side, 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 angle, side, or angle, side, angle? Well, I have two pair of corresponding angles that are congruent. Can I get 
the side in between them. Again, that's by the reflexive property. So I'm going to write statements and reasons and I need my side to be between the two angles. So I don't want to just lump the given together at the top. I want to separate them. Angle PFR is congruent to angle ORF. As a matter of fact, I'm going to move that over and that as well. Now that I have an idea how wide I need my column, I'm going to make my T-tool. That's an angle, and it's marked right there. The side is going to be FR congruent to, and you can write FR, I'm fine with that. But when we look at the triangles, we're going to need triangle PFR congruent to triangle ORF. So if you can see here, the correspondence would be that FR is congruent to RF. And our first reason was given. Our second reason is the reflexive property. And then I'm going to include the other angle that I was given. And I just realized the angle disappeared. And then we have triangle. PFR is congruent to triangle OFR. And that's by angle, side, angle, one, two, three. And then I need the corresponding part. They want me to say that PF is congruent to RO. And that's because if I have congruent triangles, then corresponding parts of those congruent triangles are congruent, and my triangles are in line four. Here, I'm given circle O, and RC is perpendicular to OE. Well, I know that perpendicular gives me right angles. I'm going to go ahead and number those because I think it's easier to work with numbered angles than trying to always make sure I get the letters in the right order. And you can go ahead and do that. I'm fine with that. So I'll label those one and two. And then I know that all radii of a circle are congruent. So as I'm thinking about which theorem I'm going to use to prove the two triangles congruent, I have to think about what they've given me. Here I have a pair of sides as well as a pair of congruent angles or that I can get to be congruent. So I'm going to eliminate side, side, side. I have a pair of angles. I'm going to eliminate side, side, side for right now. 
does it seem more likely that I'll be able to get C congruent to R or that I would be able to get OE congruent to OE? I can use the reflexive property for that, so I'm going to say side angle side. So now I'm going to begin with statements and reasons. My first statement, again, I want to write this in order. So I'm going to go for a side. I got my side from the circle. So I was given circle O. But the circle is in a side. I have to make an inference. If I'm given a circle, then all radii are congruent. And I'm making that inference from line one. So now I can say that OC is congruent to OR. That's a side of the triangle. Now I want to mention an angle. I got my angle from that given, but that is not the angle itself. If two segments are perpendicular, then they form right angles. And I need them to be congruent to use side, angle, side. Remember, we need three pair of congruent parts. So I have to go one more step to say if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent angles. So here, because I numbered them, I'm going to use the numbers in the proof. Angle one and angle two are right angles. Then angle one is congruent to angle two. That's my pair of congruent angles. Now I'm going to use the reflexive property to say that OE is congruent to itself. And the two triangles are going to be COE and ROE. So I have OE is congruent to OE. by side, angle, side, lines two, five, and six. Now looking back to what they wanted me to prove, they want me to prove that EC is congruent to ER. And I do have to go back and mark my diagram. I've already used the two tick marks on OE, so I'm going to go ahead and add a third. And that's because if I have congruent triangles, then corresponding parts of those congruent triangles are congruent. And my triangles are in line seven. Now I wanna go back and add my T-tool. Double check to make sure 
that everything is marked on the diagram. And now I can move forward. In this proof, we're given that the rays trisect segment IT, EI is congruent to ET, angle I is congruent to angle T, and I have to prove that EG is congruent to EH. So right now I need to decide which triangles I'm going to prove congruent. I could go with triangle EIH is congruent to triangle EG, or sorry, ETG, but that would require some addition in here. So let's see if I can find a different pair. What if I tried EIG and ETH? They gave me again EI is congruent to ET. Angle I is congruent to angle T. And then, because of the trisection, I'll be able to get IG congruent to TH. And notice, since the diagram was a little more complicated, I separated the triangles into a separate drawing. You are going to want to do that. That will be helpful for you. So now I'm going to go ahead and think about, I could use side angle side to write the proof. I want to note the pair of congruent sides. Then I'm going to note the angle. That is also given. Then my other given is that ray GE, sorry, ray EG and ray EH trisect segment IT, but that does not give me a side of the triangle. So I need to make an inference from that. If a segment is trisected, then it's divided into three congruent segments. But for this proof, I don't need all three. I just need IG congruent to TH. That's my other segment. So now I can say triangle EIG is congruent to triangle ETH by side, angle, side, lines one, two, and four. And they want me to prove that EG is congruent to EH. And that's because if I have congruent triangles, 
then the corresponding parts of those congruent triangles are congruent. So by the magic of technology, I am going to shrink this up so that we can see the diagram and the proof in one frame. Then I'm going to go back and add my T-tool. It's not exactly straight. Make sure that I've marked everything I have on the diagram, you do need to mark the new part as well. Let's look at one more example. We're given angle Z is congruent to angle B. I'm going to mark the diagram. A is the midpoint. Remember, a midpoint divides a segment into two congruent segments. So that would mean ZA is congruent to AB, and I need to make that inference. And then I need a third pair of corresponding parts. So I can prove triangles congruent by side, 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 angle, side, or angle, side, angle. Right now I'm given a pair of angles and a pair of sides. So I can probably eliminate side, side, side. The question is, can I get ZE, because it would need to be the next side. Remember, if you're going to use side, angle, side, it needs to be the two sides that actually form the angle. So can I get ZE congruent to RB? Well, that's what they want me to prove. So then I'm not going to be able to do that. My other option is angle, side, angle. So if I can get this angle here congruent to this angle here, and I'm going to go ahead and number those. then I can use angle side angle. So now I'm going to write up my statements. And my reasons. And I want to again organize the proof so that my reader can follow what's going on. The angle that I was given is angle Z is congruent to angle B. Then I was given A is a midpoint of ZB. but that doesn't give me congruent segments. Again, I have to make that inference. If a point is a midpoint, then it divides the segment into two congruent segments. And I'm making that inference from line two. So now I can say that ZA is congruent to BA. And that's my side. Then I can see angle three is congruent to angle four. And that's because if two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent angles. Now I have triangle ZEA. It doesn't matter how you order the first triangle. You can pick any order you want. But now that I've chosen to name the first triangle ZEA, now I have to 
follow the correspondence for the second triangle. So Z is marked with one tick, that corresponds to angle B, and then I went to the angle that isn't marked. So now I'm going to have to go So now I need to identify which two triangles are congruent. It doesn't matter the order that I choose the first triangle, so I'm just going to go from the center out. And that's going to be congruent to, well, I started at the center, and then I moved to the angle that had one tick mark. So I have to go this way around my triangle. Once I name the first triangle, then I have to be very careful that the order of the letters on the second triangle maintains that correspondence. And now they want me to prove that ZE is congruent to BR. And I can see that right here. Because if I have congruent triangles, then corresponding parts of those congruent triangles are congruent. Double check to make sure my diagram is marked. And now I'm going to go ahead and add in my T-tool. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe.